Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video I want to show you a product that was sent to me by my friends at My Gaming Mart. And what this product is, it's just another one of those mini USB jailbreaking devices for the PS3 that are on the market today. But there's one feature that sets this one apart from the rest that is a really amazing feature I know you guys have been waiting for. So what is this? Well, today I have the E3 card reader for the PS3, and this is used to jailbreak the PS3 just like any other USB um, jailbreaking key that's on the market today, even like the X3 Max that I showed you guys a few weeks ago. Um, but basically, with the feature that sets this one apart is you're able to downgrade a PS3 that's running like 3.50, or if there's a higher firmware coming out at the time of this video, it'll even downgrade from that. So you can move your PlayStation from a higher firmware down to the 3.41, or even below that firmware that you need to be able to actually jailbreak your PS3 and run applications like the Backup Manager. Okay, so here's the features on this device. It has a 32-bit processor with 128K of flash memory. It supports micro SD cards. It also has 4 megabytes programmable onboard flash. The computer just sees that as like a regular USB flash drive, so it's just like you put in like a 4 megabyte USB flash drive. Um, I can't really see how this would be useful except for moving maybe small applications over from your computer to your PS3, like the backup manager. I know that's not over four megabytes, so you can use it as that. Also, another special feature of this key is that it's really easy to upgrade. It's one of the easiest ones that I've, uh, that I've actually had my hands on so far. You just drag and drop the new files over to it, and then it's upgraded. There's no uh, opening up like a programming tool or anything like that. It's literally just drag and drop upgrade. It takes three seconds to upgrade this thing. So let's go ahead and pull it out of the package and take a quick look at it here. So here it is, the E3 card reader. It looks just like any other card reader that you'd uh, see on the market. It has right there the slot for the micro SD card. That's not included, you'd have to get one yourself, but it's not necessary either. Here's the cap, just pull off the cap here. And that reveals the USB plug-in. And right here, I know that looks like a button. It's not a button though, it just is there for show, I believe. For a size comparison, I'll just go ahead and hold this in my palm. So like I said earlier, it's really easy to program this. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do that now. And I'm also having a giveaway for this device too, so one of you guys is going to be lucky enough to be able to get this. I'll have the details for that at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and go over to my computer and I'll show you guys how to program this and also how to use it to jailbreak your PS3 and also how to use it to downgrade your PS3. Okay, so now that we're at the computer, let's go ahead and get started here. First, I want to show you how to downgrade your PS3 using the E3 card reader. So you are going to need a couple of things before we start here. You're going to need, of course, your E3 card reader and then you're going to need a regular USB flash drive. Uh, make sure it at least has like 200 megabytes memory on it, so any flash drive these days is going to work for this. So go ahead and download the file that I have down in the description below. Bring it out to your desktop, and you're going to see it's a RAR file, E3 card reader. Go ahead and open that up and extract the two folders out to your desktop, and you should have them right there. You're going to have downgrade files and jailbreaking files. So what we want to go ahead and open up first is a downgrade files, because we're, of course, downgrading our PS3 right now. So you're going to see now inside of that folder, we have the E3 card reader folder and we have the USB drive folder. Right now, we want to go ahead and use the E3 card reader folder. So go ahead and open that up. Now go ahead and insert your E3 card reader into your USB port on the computer. Go ahead and let it install the drivers if it needs to. Once the drivers finish installing, you want to go ahead and open up my computer. And inside you're going to see two new drives. You're going to see Removable Disk G and E3 Upgrader H. We want to go ahead and open up Drive H. And it's just going to be an empty folder. And from that drive we want to go ahead and drag in our E3 downgrade.bin file. Let's go ahead and drag that on. It just copies over in just a second. It's very small. And then you're done. You can go ahead and close out that drive. And you can actually go ahead and remove your E3 card reader. So once you do that, you want to go ahead and grab your USB flash drive. And now we want to put that into the USB port on your computer. And while that loads up here, let's go ahead and close out that file. We're going to go back into the downgrade files. And this time we want the USB drive folder. Okay, so the files that we want to copy over to our USB drive are the modified 3.41 PUP file, which is our firmware file. This is what the firmware is actually on. And then we want the file one for the lv2diag.self file. So let's go ahead and pull up our flash drive. And you want to make sure that this flash drive is clear and that there's nothing else on it. So go ahead and make sure you have everything deleted. So let's go ahead and drag these files over. We want to copy this one. We'll paste it. 
This file is big, it's about 167 megabytes, you want to give that a couple of minutes to transfer over. Once that file finishes transferring, you want to go back into your other folder, and then we want to go ahead and bring the uh, file one over. So we're going to go ahead and double click, copy that file, and go ahead and paste it in. Now that we have both files, now we want to go ahead and go over to our PS3. So make sure you go ahead and close out, take your USB drive out, and grab your E3, and then head over to the PS3. Okay, now that I'm over at the PS3, I just want to show you that it is running 3.50 firmware, so I'm just going to go ahead and start it up like normal. Alright, we'll go ahead and go over here to settings, and then system settings, and all the way down to system information. And you can see there it is on the 3.50 firmware. Let's go ahead and close out and shut off the PlayStation. Alright, once the PlayStation turns off, I'm going to go ahead and take your E3 card reader. Go ahead and go over to the PlayStation, turn off the power. Plug your E3 card reader into one of the USB ports. Turn the power back on and do power eject really quickly. And it's going to go ahead and start up. Basically like you're starting up in jailbreaking mode, but it's going to be a little bit different. So we're going to go ahead and go back over to the screen here. And this is the first step. What we're doing right now is getting the PS3 into factory service mode. Okay, so now once it's started up, what we want to go ahead and do is turn the PlayStation right back off. You want to do it from the menu. It's important that you do that, so go ahead and hold on the PS button and then do turn system off. Alright, once you do that, go ahead and remove your E3 card reader. And then turn your PlayStation back on and just let it boot up like normal. Once it boots up, you're going to immediately see here it says PlayStation 3 factory service mode. And that's how you know that you're in the right mode. So, just to show you guys here that I'm still on 3.50, I'll go ahead and show you the uh, firmware. There we go. See, we're still on 3.50. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is do the initial jailbreak. So now that you, uh, that you verify that you're in factory service mode, go ahead and turn the PlayStation off again. So hold down the PS button, go to turn off system, let it shut down. Then you want to go ahead and grab your USB flash drive. And we're going to go ahead and go over to the PlayStation. Now this is important. You want to put your flash drive in the furthest USB port on the right of the PlayStation. So it's always the last one. So on this one, I only have two USB ports, so it's going to go in the second one. Then just go ahead and start your PlayStation back up like normal. And you're going to notice that it's going to hang. And your TV is either going to sit on a black screen or like a blue screen saying no signal. And it's going to sit there for probably three or four minutes. What it's doing is installing the 3.41 firmware or whatever firmware you're choosing to install. You'll also notice that the light on your USB flash drive will be lit up. And the hard drive access indicator light on the front of your PlayStation will be blinking. That shows that it's installing the firmware. And if we look at the TV, it's just sitting on a blue screen that says no signal. Like I said, this just takes a few minutes. Okay, once that process finishes, the PlayStation is going to automatically shut off. Once that happens, go ahead and go over to your PlayStation and pull out your flash drive. And then just go ahead and start it up like you normally would. Now when the PlayStation boots up, if all went well, you should be in on the 3.41 firmware. And it should be reset to like factory defaults. Okay, so you can see we are booted up and we're still in service mode, but let's go ahead and see if this works. So we're going to go ahead and back to the uh, settings and we'll go back to the system info. And yep, you can see there. So now we're on 3.41. So now the next goal is to get this thing out of factory service mode and just get it back into regular mode. So what we want to go ahead and do for that is head on over to the computer and we're going to be replacing one file on our flash drive. Okay, now that we're back at the computer, we're going to go ahead and replace that file on our flash drive. And this file is going to be used to kick the PlayStation out of factory service mode, so it just goes back into regular mode. So go ahead and insert your flash drive. And while that's uh, loading up here, we'll go ahead and close out this folder. And open your downgrade files folder back up. And we want to go into the USB drive folder. And then this time we want file 2. LV2DIAG file 2. Go ahead and copy that file. And we want to go ahead and open up our flash drive. And again, like the first time, you want to go ahead and delete everything that's on the flash drive. And then just go ahead and paste in that file. And then what we can do next is just go ahead and close out and then remove your flash drive. And then we're going to head back over to the PlayStation. Okay, now that we've got our file back on our USB drive and we're back at the PlayStation, we want to go ahead and power it off. And again, make sure we're doing this from the menu. Once the PlayStation's powered off, go ahead and take your USB flash drive. And we'll go ahead and put it in a second port. Remember the last USB port. And then just go ahead and turn it on like normal. And 
your PlayStation is just going to sit there. Nothing's going to come up on your screen. Once your flash drive starts blinking, it should blink for about 10 seconds, and then the PlayStation is going to immediately turn off. And there you go, you can see that it did turn off. So now we'll go ahead and remove the flash drive. And now we'll turn the PlayStation back on. And what that did, it kicked it out of service mode. So now when the PlayStation starts up, it's not going to be in service mode anymore. So let's go ahead and go over to the TV. Now that this starts up, it's going to look like a brand new PlayStation. So it's, you're going to have to set everything back up. So we want to go and pick English. I am in Central Time. I'm not going to worry about the time and date right now. User 1's fine. Enter. Then it wants us to set up our internet connection settings. Okay, once you get all your settings in, you should be back out at the XMB. And if all went well, you shouldn't be in service mode anymore, so you shouldn't see the little red box. Now, the only bad thing about this is, when you do this, it does a factory reset. So you want to make sure that you back up all your game saves and anything else that you have on your PlayStation that you don't want to lose, because it's going to go back to factory defaults. So let's go ahead and go over and just make sure that we're still on 3.41. Yeah, it looks like we are. So we just downgraded a PlayStation that was on the 3.50 firmware, and we just uh, downgraded it down to 3.41. So now what I'm going to go ahead and show you guys next is how to jailbreak your PS3 now that it's on 3.41 using your E3 card reader. So let's go ahead and go back over to the computer. Okay, so now that we're back at the computer, you want to make sure that you have your E3 card reader, and go ahead and plug it into the USB port on your computer. Go ahead and close this out and get it out of the way. While that's loading up, let's go ahead and open up the folder now, Jailbreaking Files, because now we're going to be moving over the files that actually jailbreak your PS3 onto the E3 card reader. So let's go ahead and get the card reader opened up here. Remember, it's going to be drive H, or the E3 upgrader drive. Go ahead and double click on that. It should be empty. Now we want to go ahead and drag over this file. So we're going to go ahead and copy it. and now paste it onto your E3 card reader. And that's it, so now we'll go ahead and close out. You can remove your card reader, and now we're gonna go back over to the PlayStation again. Okay, so now that you're back at the PS3, you wanna go ahead and turn it off. So we'll go ahead and hold down the PS button, turn off the system, and it's gonna shut off. While it's turning off, go ahead and grab your E3 card reader. And now we're gonna go ahead and go over to the PlayStation. Now we're actually jailbreaking it, so go ahead and flip off your power switch. Plug your E3 card reader into the USB port on your PlayStation. Turn the power switch back on. Do power, and then eject quickly. Okay, now that the PlayStation's booted up, at this point you, uh, you may notice that your controller doesn't sync up with the PlayStation. If that happens, no big deal. Just go ahead and come over to your PlayStation, and we'll just remove the E3 card reader. We don't need that anymore now that we're booted up anyway. You only have to use that every time you boot up your PlayStation, and you want to be able to... Uh, play games off the backup manager or whatever. Then just go ahead and plug in your controller. And let's go ahead and go back over to the TV now. Alright, good. Now we're synced up. So I'm going to go ahead and show you we are on 3.41 firmware and we are jailbroken because we do have the install package files folder and also the app home PS3 game folder. So let's go ahead and go over here and just uh, I'll show you once again that we're on 3.41. Yep, there it is, 3.41. So congratulations, guys. You just downgraded your PS3 from 3.50 firmware or above to 3.41, and now you're able to jailbreak it. So there you go. You can see that programming this and using this device is really easy. It's one of the easiest ones that I've seen so far. Um, so now let's go ahead and get to the giveaway details. All I need you guys to do to, if you want to enter the win this device is just go ahead and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, first of all. And then just leave me a comment below just telling me why you want this device. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read through all the comments. And... What I'll probably do is I'll find another unique way to pick the winner, like uh, usually what I do is I print out all the comments and then I go out back with a BB gun and I just take a random shot and whoever I hit, that's who wins. So anyway, you guys just make sure you're subscribed, leave your comments below, and I will pick the winner two weeks from today. I'll have the day the contest ends on down in the description along with all the downloads that you need to program this, and also down there is the link where you can buy this device if you're not lucky enough to win it. It's on sale right now for $29.95, so that's a really good price for this device considering all what it does. So that's all I have for you guys today. I really wish you guys luck in the contest on winning this, and also I hope that the little tutorial helped a lot of you guys out with programming this device. Good luck, and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, before I go, I just want to let you know that you can check out my newest vlog and personal channel right here. 
Remember to go ahead and check out my website and my forums. There's a lot of support for you guys. And also, make sure you're subscribed to my videos. I don't know why you wouldn't be already, but you can do it here. And you